Hi everyone, welcome back to Nath Math Drilling. Today I'm going to show you the method of finding volumes by cross sections. So this is an advanced method for high um, level high school or university level maths. So I've got a shape here which is a, frust a frustum, which is a cone or pyramid with the top chopped off. So you notice here I've got what will look if I connect it up here, it's pretty much a cone with the top chopped off. So what happens is Basically, we a small circle here and a bigger circle at the bottom. The radius of the top is little r, the radius of the bottom is bigger, and the height is big h. And I need to work out the volume of this shape. So the method we want to use is the cross-section method. So what that means is we need to find the volume of the cross-section and then sum up all those little cross-sections. Because if you notice here, if I take a cross-section Okay, just bear with me here. Right. So each cross section pretty much looks like this. So I don't, my art skills aren't that great. So you'll notice here they are mini cylinders of radius X, which is unknown. And I'm gonna call a thickness little delta H. Right, where H is the height from the bottom to the strip. It's a little h. So what we, the method we need to do is we need to work at the volume of this little strip and then we sum up all those little, because volume, those little cylinders to get the whole shape. Because basically this um, frustrum is just a combination of cylinders stacked on top of each other with different radiuses. So the key here is, since the thickness is delta h, we need to put x in terms of h. Now in order to do that, we're gonna use a 2D cross section the opposite way. So when we take a cross section, we take we slice it across the shape, but now I'm gonna slice it down this way. So I'm going down this way now, instead of that way for the cross section. So what you notice here is if I draw it here, my cross section looks like this. So that is what my cross section of the whole shape is, right? In terms of the given lengths, little r, big r, and big h. X and little h are my unknowns. And since the thickness is in terms of little h, I need to put x in terms of little h, because the volume of this cylinder will just be pi, oh, let me just fix that, x squared delta h, right? Because it's pi r squared times the height. So because we're doing delta H, we're gonna to have to use integration and I need this to be in terms of H. So the key to doing this is to notice as we go from top to bottom or bottom to top, is X and H vary linearly, right? You see this relationship here? This is a linear relationship. So that means I can write X as a linear function of H. Well, I need to work out what M and B are. And to do that, we look what happens here. Now at the bottom, little h is zero because by definition, h starts at the bottom and x is bigger. And then at the top, little h is now the total height and x is now the little radius. So if I use these two facts, I can sub those in and I get zero, so r equals zero plus b. So that means b equals r. And I sub the other one in, I get little r equals mr. Let me try, did I type that in wrong? Um, sorry, that's a big H, yeah. Plus b, which is now r. If we rearrange this, I get m is little r minus big r over h. So therefore, x equals little r minus big r over h, little h plus r. So then my delta v will equal pi, all that squared. So then to get the volume is the sum of all those delta v's from 
h equals zero up to big H. And what happens is, is we want to take the limit as delta H goes to zero. So what that means is we want to take the limit as this thickness goes to zero, which is basically stacking on top of each other little of circles to get the whole shape. And that by definition is the integral. So that's where actually integration comes from. So we end up with this integral from zero to H R minus bigger on H little, little h plus r squared dh. I'll just fix this up a bit here. So we're actually integrating in terms of just h here. Everything else is a constant. So if you remember how to integrate a linear function, it's going to be, I keep putting that first, we raise the power by 1, divide by the new power and the derivative of the inside. Between big H and zero. So I'm running out of space here, so let's just get a new page. Okay, so I've just rewritten the, the volume on a new page for us to see, and I've simplified, I've flipped the fraction. So all I do now is sub in each bound. and that should be a cubed here. Okay, so if I put big H in first, I'm gonna get R minus big R H on H plus R, and let's actually make sure we have that all cubed, minus. And if I put zero in, well that disappears, so I just left with R cubed. So then that's pi h on three brackets r minus big r. Now they cancel. So this r minus big r plus big r. So I end up with r cubed minus big r cubed in the brackets. And what you'll notice is I'm not done because I can actually factorize this as a difference of two cubes as follows. So this is one of those formulas you can remember. over three r minus big r. And then you'll notice these cancel. So the volume is pi h on three r squared plus r big r plus r squared unit cube, because I didn't have a unit. So that is the standard formula for the volume of a frustrum, okay? We're or the cylinder version of a frustrum. Sorry, cone version of a frustrum, not cylinder. Okay, so just, just make sure you remember the process is, first I'll just quickly summarize it again. Take your cross section. Okay, introduce dimensions and thickness. Okay, so that next is, what we did was we split down middle and put dimension in terms of the thickness. Right, that was putting X in terms of H. And then three, pretty much, you find delta V, then integrate. Then V, then integrate. So that's the basic procedure to finding volumes using cross section. Make sure you take the cross section and introduce a dimension and thickness variable, and you're gonna split it down the middle, so that way you'll have a 2D shape that gives you a relationship between the dimension and the thickness. In this case, it was the fact that they were linear, that was this relationship here. So most of the time, you're either gonna get a trapezium type pattern or a triangle type pattern, right? In the triangle type pattern, you use similar triangles. In the one we did here, we use the fact that this is linear. So we use the linear method here. Then step three, you now find the volume of that little cross section shape, then 
which gives you the formula for the volume and then you just integrate to get the actual volume. So um, if there's any steps you're unsure because this is quite advanced, make sure to comment below so I can help clarify those. Otherwise, um, just comment below what other things you would like help with. And don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.